assalamu alaikum and hello uh, this is our second lesson and today we'll be talking about sayed ahmed shaheed barelvi we have already done the first class or the first lesson on uh, shabaliulla for those of you who are uh, my first time viewers i am nada and i'm trying to make history a little bit simpler and interesting for all of you um i'm going to run through uh, the pakistan zanis o level scores this this can also be uh, you know used for uh, uh, people attempting css or you know studying history in general pakistan history or the history of the subcontinent in general so let's begin second ahmed shaheed barelvi uh, he is the second religious scholar according to your text that is nigel kelly the text that you are that you are following okay so he is the second a religious uh, thinker of the subcontinent okay so let's talk about sayed ahmed shaheed barelvi i've uh, tried to make it very concise and interesting okay uh, let's focus on certain words so that we can remember shaheed okay sayed ahmed shaheed barelvi 18 1786 is the year in which he was born he was born in lucknow in a small town of rai bareilly 1806 he went to madrasa rahimia the madrasa rahimia this is the same madrasa uh, that was founded by shah waliullah's father there he studied quran and hadith for 2 years and in 1810 he joined forces of amir khan who was a pathan and there he learned how to use european weaponry and uh, uh, learned some military skills and leadership skills there okay so this is very this is also important because i have seen uh, uh, you know a one an mcq uh, that came from here that is uh, whose forces did uh, sayed ahmed shaheed barelvi join in 1810 so it was amir khan's forces okay so believes what were his beliefs now he was a man of action sayed ahmed shaheed barelvi not just a scholar but a man of action and he believed that an armed struggle was essential to liberate the muslims of the subcontinent from the british rule or from the non muslim rule he also believed that uh, the society had to be cleansed of all the evil practices uh, that were prevalent um, and this this had to uh, be done for the moral and intellectual regeneration of the muslims then he emphasized on jihad and he considered jihad to be a solution for restoring the muslims to power again and ridding the society of the islamic practices uh, and uh, coming to the basic principles of islam uh, which were slow, slowly being uh, brushed under the carpet because okay now moving over to the work that uh, sayed ahmed shaheed bari needed uh, he held a lot of meetings and popularized jihad and he in <clears throat> he believed that the formation of an army was very essential to fight uh, the uh, british and the non muslim forces on 1821 he had gone for hajj 1823 he returned and that was the time when he started taking action punjab was an area which required his attention why because it was under a sikh ruler by the name of ranjit singh who was oppressing the muslims and he was not letting the muslims pray openly call to prayer was also banned in punjab so for that uh, he finally started forming a mujahideen force for which he traveled a lot he went to punjab northwest frontier sindh balochistan rajasthan afghanistan and recruited force uh, you know members into his army <coughs> sorry and uh, there was a time when his uh, force rose to you know the strength of uh, 80000 men which was also uh, Uh, a credit that goes to him uh, in this way he was also uniting all the muslims together okay so on he, he uh, finally decided of you know giving an ultimatum to ranjit singh uh, and uh, telling him that either he had to stop uh, or he had to he would, he would be facing uh, the mujahideen force ranjit singh however dismissed to the ultimatum and as a result on 21st of december 1826 an important date he was forced to attack okara that is uh, sayed ahmed shaheed was forced to attack okara and the six were defeated as a result so this is something that goes in the favor of the muslims 
okay later on because of this popularity that we he was gaining not only on the you know this uh, on the battleground but also among the people he 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 was declared unanimously by the muslim leaders as the imam and that happened in the year 1827 so another achievement he defeated the six one he was declared as the imam but later on he also had to face a little some setbacks what setbacks when he was preparing to attack the fort of atak he had to confront a 35000 sikh army and this was also a surprise attack uh, here uh, uh, it was not because uh, his force his mujahideen force was incompetent but because of two reasons that the muslims lost number one somebody tried to poison him uh, that is uh, sayed ahmed uh, and uh, secondly Uh, there was a person in his army by the name of Yar Muhammad. This Yar Muhammad was bribed by the six, and therefore he deserted the battlefield uh, during the battle, resulting in uh, to the you know chaos and confusion. And finally, the Muslims lost the battle. In eighteen thirty one, again the, a battle was fought by the name of the Battle of Balakot. This is very very essential. Uh, it comes in the MCQs. Eighteen thirty one, the Battle of Balakot. Now this battle was also a setback for the Muslims because the Muslims lost it. The Muslims were heavily outnumbered, and the Sikh force was a very very large force. Uh, although the Muslims fought, uh, you know, with a lot of vigor and enthusiasm, and uh, uh, but they lost, and in, as a result of this battle, six hundred Muslims lost their uh, lives. Including Sayyid Ahmed Shahid Bareilly, so this is the year when his period ends or his uh, life. Okay, now moving on to the importance. Yes, two important things that he achieved. He was successful in formulating a jihad movement. He was successful in organizing a mujahideen force. Now this this was the first armed movement or a military action that any Muslim leader had organized in the subcontinent, and the purpose of all the actions and all the work that he had done was spiritual and to to attain spiritual and religious liberty. It there were no self, uh, uh, you know, selfish motives attached to the work that he was doing. Jihad movement. Not only united the Muslims, but it gave them a lot of strength and support. This movement, jihad movement, is considered as a forerunner of the Pakistan movement. Now, you, we already know how important Pakistan movement is because Pakistan movement eventually resulted in the creation of our homeland, that is Pakistan. So, undeniably. You know this movement, uh, jihad movement, is considered or is very very important. Uh, and uh, lastly, but not the least, he was a massive massive source of inspiration for all the leaders who were, uh, you know, things that we have studied so far. You know his introduction. This is his biographical details. You can do it. It's not difficult at all. Learn the dates. His beliefs. Just two or three uh, th lines, or you know, uh, uh, points that you have to learn and keep in mind. Then, if you talk about his work, uh, important dates that you have to remember. He was he was uh, declared as the Imam, and uh, the you know the role that he played in uh, defeating the six and uh, yeah, Mujahideen force. Uh, organization of the Mujahideen force. All these are uh, all these things are important. And then when you talk about importance, it's just summarizing all that we have learned so far. So with this, we come to the end of this lesson two as well. I'll be preparing lesson three very soon, insha Allah. And I hope that you are enjoying and not finding it boring. Please share my videos with your friends and all those who you think. Uh, Kek would be able to benefit out of it. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye bye.